Some true legends of the wrestling ring went to their final rest in 2023, many of them far too young. Fans will surely never forget them. Bray Wyatt, whose real name was Wyndham Rotunda, died on August 24, 2023. At the age of just 36, the third-generation wrestler died of a heart attack. A doctor had recommended Rotunda wear a portable defibrillator because of heart problems caused by COVID-19. He was found by his fiance, former ring announcer Jojo Offerman, after she became concerned when the alarm on the machine kept going off. Rotunda was pronounced dead at a local hospital that day. After working continuously for WWE since 2009, Rotunda was released in 2021. He was brought back into the company at Extreme Rules 2022 and became involved in a story with his real-life brother, Bo Dallas, who portrayed the character Uncle Howdy. Rotunda was removed from television because of a then-undisclosed illness after beginning a feud with Bobby Lashley prior to WrestleMania 39. Rotunda debuted on WWE TV in 2010 when he joined the reality show version of NXT as Husky Harris. He later joined the heel stable, The Nexus. In 2011, he was taken off TV and sent to Florida Championship Wrestling, WWE's developmental division at the time. He returned to the relaunched NXT in 2012 as Bray Wyatt, with Eric Rowan and the late Luke Harper as the Wyatt family. Throughout his career, Wyatt engaged the fans with his various spooky personas, such as The Fiend, with his terrifying mask. Yeah. Don't you wish you uh -huh. could just get back at everyone who wronged you in your life? Uh-huh. Man, that would be cool, right? That would be awesome. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Jay Briscoe, whose real name was Jamin Pugh, was a legend in Ring of Honor. He died at the age of just 38 on January 17th after a car accident. He was driving with his daughters not far from his home in Delaware. According to the Delaware State Police, a woman driving a truck failed to remain in her lane and collided with Pew's truck head-on. He was reportedly not wearing a seatbelt. His daughters were hospitalized, but survived. Jay and his brother Mark were 13-time ROH World Tag Team Champions and also held gold in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact, Game Changer Wrestling, and elsewhere. Jay made his wrestling debut at just 16 years old in May 2000, wrestling with his brother in a Delaware-based promotion. Jay debuted for ROH in 2002, but the brothers officially entered the tag team division in 2003. They were the reigning ROH tag champions when Briscoe died, having captured the titles from FTR at Final Battle 2022. Jay also held the ROH World Championship twice as a single star. The Briscoe brothers were inducted into the ROH Hall of Fame in the inaugural class of 2022. Following his death, Pugh was honored with a show about his legacy on AEW television, even though Warner Media did not allow the Briscoes on AEW television while Pugh was alive because of controversial comments for which he had apologized. His brother now appears in both AEW and ROH. WWE Hall of Famer Terry Funk, a legend of hardcore wrestling, died on August 23rd at the age of 79. The Funker was reportedly wheelchair-bound prior to his death. Terry began his wrestling career in the 60s in a tag team with his brother, Dory Funk Jr. Terry broke out as a single star in the NWA, and in December 1975, he bested Jack Briscoe for the promotion's title. Funk first appeared in the WWF in 1985, and he teamed with his brother at WrestleMania II. He also competed in WCW, where he had a legendary rivalry with Ric Flair. He and Dory were also well-known names in All Japan Pro Wrestling. Terry is perhaps best known to fans as an innovator of hardcore wrestling alongside Mick Foley. Their 1995 feud in ECW, which took place when Terry was 50, included barbed wire and much more. Terry returned to the WWF in 1997 as Chainsaw Charlie, partnering once again with Foley. In his final WWE match in 2006, Terry teamed with Tommy Dreamer and Beulah McGillicuddy against Foley, Edge, and Lita. He was inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame in 2009. He continued wrestling in Japan and on the independent scene well into the 2010s. And your last match was 2017. Yeah, how many years is that? That's, 50, that's 52 years. Hossein Khosrow Ali Vasira was an amateur wrestler in his home country of Iran. After emigrating to the U.S., he became the Iron Sheik, an iconic star whose career spanned many decades. He died on June 7th at the age of 81. The master of the suplex and camel clutch died peacefully, according to a message posted to his popular account on X, formerly known as Twitter. Sheik made his debut in 1979 in the promotion that would become WWE at their spiritual home of Madison Square Garden. He left the company numerous times throughout his career, appearing in WCCW, AWA, NWA, and WCW. 
1991, Sheik returned to the WWE under the name Colonel Mustafa. Sheik had a storied career that included winning the WWF Championship from Bob Backlund in 1983 to a tag title run with Nikolai Volkov in 1985. He lost one of the most famous matches in history to Hulk Hogan in 1984, marking Hogan's first World Championship win. Sheik's last match in the company was at WrestleMania 17, where he won the gimmick Battle Royal. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2005. One of the most influential pro wrestlers ever, superstar Billy Graham, whose real name was Wayne Coleman, passed away at the age of 79 on May 17th. The WWE Hall of Famer faced numerous health issues for well over a year before his passing. He had undergone a liver transplant after being diagnosed with liver disease and cirrhosis. He had also suffered heart failure. He contracted the COVID-19 virus, had an ear infection that spread to his skull, experienced renal failure, and more before being taken off life support. Graham debuted in WWE when it was still known as the World Wide Wrestling Federation in 1975. He won the promotions championship from Bruno San Martino in 1977 and held the title for 10 months. WWE calls it the longest reign for any ring villain. While that was his only title during his time with the WWF, he gained gold in many other promotions. He briefly returned to the WWF in the late 1980s as a broadcaster and manager. His influence inspired the likes of Jesse the Body Ventura, Scott Steiner, and Hulk Hogan. He was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2004. WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Butch, real name Robert Miller, died at the age of 78 on April 2nd. He had a brief illness and a stay in intensive care after arriving in Los Angeles for a WrestleMania appearance. His death was announced by the daughter of his longtime tag team partner, Bushwhacker Luke, on Instagram. Miller's death was reportedly caused by forgetting to pack medication for high blood pressure. Butch and Luke broke into the business in the 1960s, wrestling in their native country of New Zealand. The pair would eventually venture to the NWA under the name The Sheep Herders, where they were known for their wild style and often violent bloodbaths. They won several championships in the NWA before heading to the WWF at the end of 1988, calling themselves The Bushwhackers and adopting a much less violent style. They competed at multiple WrestleMania events and even ventured into pop culture, wrestling on an episode of Family Matters. The Bushwhackers were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2015. Former WWF and ECW star Darren Draws Drozdoff passed away on June 30th from natural causes at the age of 54. Draws went to the WWF after a career in the NFL. He debuted in the company in 1998 with a gimmick in which he threw up on cue. He's coming at you! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! Yeah, he's gonna puke! But he's best remembered for his time in a retooled The Legion of Doom. Draz's in-ring career sadly ended following an accident during an untelevised portion of an October 1999 episode of SmackDown in a match with D'Lo Brown. Taking a botched move, Draz landed on his head, breaking two vertebrae in his neck, paralyzing him from the neck down for the rest of his life. A statement from his family following his death focused on the positives, praising Drozdov for living life to the fullest following his accident. The genius Lanny Poffo, the brother of Macho Man Randy Savage, died on February 2nd of congestive heart failure. He was 68. In addition to his genius gimmick, Lanny was also known in the WWF and elsewhere as Leaping Lanny. His career began in the 1970s in different NWA promotions, as well as in international championship wrestling, the company originally owned by his father, Angelo Poffo. Lanny was in the WWF from 1985 to 1992. He didn't wrestle his final match until January 2020, when he appeared for Survival Championship Wrestling. Poffo also appeared on an episode of AEW Dynamite in 2020 as part of a tribute to the Legends of Memphis Wrestling. The genius was known for his heel poetry in the ring, but also for his work in books, including a biography comic book and an anti-smoking poetry book aimed at children. Legendary wrestling promoter Jerry Jarrett died on February 14th at the age of 80 after battling esophageal cancer. Jarrett was best known for founding the Memphis-based CWA alongside Jerry the King Lawler in 1977. He worked as both a wrestler as well as a promoter, making his in-ring debut for NWA Mid-America in 1969. He retired from in-ring competition in 1988, but competed in a few matches for the United States Wrestling Association, which he also promoted in 1993 and 1995. Jarrett was a 15-time NWA Mid-America Southern Tag Team Champion. He also spent years doing consulting work with both WCW and the WWF. 
In 2002, Jerry and his son Jeff Jarrett co-founded Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. Once known as one of the WWF's most absurd characters, Mantar, Mike Halleck died peacefully in his sleep on July 11th at the age of 55, according to his daughter. She said Halleck was no longer in pain after falling and injuring his back earlier in the day. Mantar was billed as half man and half beast upon debuting in the World Wrestling Federation in early 1995. He was even briefly managed by Jim Cornette. After the gimmick was dropped, Halleck returned to the WWF as Goldust's bodyguard and as a member of the Truth Commission stable named Tank. He also competed as Bruiser Mastino in ECW and appeared in one WCW dark match.